let's compare hex bin and elf files in this video breaking them down analyzing their structure and understanding that significance is what we aim for so i have three hex files of a simple led blink program with me here each of this is related to a different microcontroller first one of ATtiny85 second of stm32f411 and the third is of nrf52840 based chip if you are just getting started with these microcontrollers check out our videos on the top right corner okay so first we will evaluate the format of a hex file each line of the hex file comprises of a record which begins with a colon followed by two digit ll which represents length of actual data in bytes then four digit a which is the starting address from where the data has to be written to tt represents record type and can be 00, zero indicating that this particular record line has a simple record data 01 stating that it's the end of the file record 02 and 04 provides an update in the address to which the data from this record file would be subsequently returned to dd represents actual data and the number of bytes would be equal to the length which was provided by the ll field in the beginning at last we have cc representing checksum Here is a line of record from a hex file as an example. Look at how it is decoded. Let us look at a record example with record type TT as 04. This is an extended linear address. So, this is used when we need customized 32 bit address for the upcoming data to be written at. Look at the lower 16 bits, which are all 0, and the upper 16 bits which are all f. So the new address becomes 0 hex f f f f followed by 4 times 0. When next record line is encountered, the address field is used to obtain absolute memory address to which the data will be subsequently written to. Herein, in this example, 2462 is the next record line's address field equivalent so our final address for subsequent data writing would be 0 hex f f f f 2462 in case of record type 02 address obtained is shifted 4 bits to finally get the absolute address you can check it out i'll be sharing a link to it so that you can have a better look you won't witness a 04 or 05 record type in AVR hex files though. Moving on, let's quickly go through each of these open files. In the ATtiny85, we have 10 as the data length in bytes. Remember, this is 0 hex 10. So this is equivalent to 16 in decimal. Actual data here begins from 0 hex 0e in the first record line. And the starting address is 0 hex 0, 0, 0, 0. Reading the data sheet, you can obviously relate it to the flash memory map. End of the file as usual 0, 01 record type as discussed. In STM32F411 hex file, we encounter record type 04 in the very first record line, which ends up giving us a totally new address as 0 hex 0, 08, 0, 0, followed by 4 times 0. Next record line has 0 hex 0, 0, 0, 0 in the address field. So absolute address remains the same as the previous known address. Notice record type 0, 0 in the next record line and data in beginning is 0 hex 0, 0, 0 hex 0, 0, 0 hex 0, 2. Same as usual, the end of file has a 01 record type. 
Referring to the reference manual, you can have a look at how the flash memory address matches with the address which was obtained in the first record with record type 04. Last one, NRF 52840 hex file. 00 is the record type in the first record line. But wait, the address field is 0 hex 1000. More on it in a while. The actual data starts from 0 hex 30. End of the file, as usual, has record type 01. Referring the memory map, we see flash starts from address 0 hex 8 times 0. But application at 0 hex 0000 followed by 1000. So I have NRF52840 dongle connected and NRF Connect app open on my laptop and we can witness the same memory section. So MBR section starting from 0 hex 8 times 0 is at the top of the flash. This right here is responsible for safeguarding memory operations as well as any upload of bootloader or application sectors. Application memory section is next from 0 hex 0000 1000. I hope you get the point. Alright, so target hex is down. Moving on to bin files. Let's quickly open LED Blink project bin files of all our three chips. We are using an online website here and the link would be provided in the description. Let us try to figure out this alien language. Do? Do? Do. So if you don't have a bin file already, you can generate it using obj copy command. For 8085, we will be using avr toolchain command avr obj copy. I have the bin file here already. Let me just remove it and again generate. Alright, so once we have our bin file, we will disassemble it using avr obj dump command. Okay, my mistake, I forgot the M option which stands for machine. Oops, let me correct this again and run. Okay, cool. We'll save it to another .asm file. Let's open this file in VS Code. Right here, we have the hex representation of our binary data on the left side of the screen and the related instruction set or opcode on the right. Let's talk about one of the instruction IN R24, 0 hex 17. This instruction loads data from I.O. register or special function register to GPR or general purpose register. In this case of 0 hex 17, the register is DDRV. So basically, we are reading the status of this port B in R24 internal register. As you can see in the data sheet, it is the port B data direction register. As you go further in the program, particular pin is set and reset to create a blink effect. Next for STM32F411, we will be using ARM toolchain commands. You can select .bin file as output in STM32 cube IDE or use obj copy command in the command prompt like we used earlier. But in this time, arm none eavi obj copy is to be used to generate dot bin file okay we will proceed to disassemble it using obj dump command and save it in another another file all right we will examine it now in vs code look at how the first line starts with data 0 x 200 00 Zero, 00, which is opposite to the data in the second record of the hex file, which was 0x00, 0x00, 0x02, 0x20. Why is this? Hmm. This is because of little NDN format.
the right hand side has instruction first one is and cs which appears to be a conditional code instruction cs here stands for carry set so if carry flag is set then perform the and operation which gives r0 equal to r0 and r2 i will leave a link to conditional code suffix list in description however on the left hand side this here points to an address in sram followed by pointer to an address of flash function reset handler you can use arm nun eavi nm to relate this memory address to the respective symbols see the first address relates to underscore e stack which is the end of stack or top of stack with which stack pointer would be initialized so basically obj dump has related this memory address with an instruction in the assembly file on scrolling further we find reset handler function address as well but this time with a difference of one with the function pointer in the asm file well this difference is because of thumb instruction set implementation in which bit 0 of function pointer indicates the mode arm or thumb instruction i will simply leave some resources for you to read and you can figure it out from there there are some actual instructions happening in the lower sections of the file so just take your time explore according to your obviously your own microcontroller and let me know if you find something in the comment section repeating our procedure of disassembling for nrf5240 we see that this wire here already has been filed but if not you can use obj copy command but i won't go through it right now we will directly use obj dump command and save disassembled data to a file we find out that the data in the very first line to be 0 hex 20003130 c which is again reverse of what we found in the first record of our hex file specifying little ndn format on the left side again this here represents an address in sram but i couldn't relate it to any symbol using nm command the next few addresses are linked to flash let's see the related symbols so for function pointer 2c55 we have a underscore underscore start then z underscore arm underscore reset function at address 2c54 then for pointer 8a db we relate to z underscore arm underscore nmi function at 8a da and so on this again here represents thumb based instruction the nrf environment is much more complex and maybe i think in the process irrelevant symbols are removed all right target bin is down next up we will start by uploading our files to an online elf file reader to examine the elf files check out the link in the description a quick look will give you crucial file info like elf headers segment or program headers section headers symbol tab and obviously the magic number which identifies that this indeed is an elf file then there are section headers which basically relates to various sections within the elf file example of such sections are text where actual code lies dot data where your initialized variables rest dot bss which has the uninitialized variables dot ro data which has read only data or constant variables dot sim tab which has function names variable names and strings and so on i hope you get the idea think of elf file as a book and sections are like its chapter each section contains a specific type of information needed to debug or run the program dot sim tab acts like an index of this book then there are segments which are collections of sections and and they are either just metadata for debugging or 
other purposes or they are needed to be loaded into the memory. All right. To get the same ELF file data through command line, we will use AVR read ELF or for 8985 and ARM9 EAVI read ELF for HTML32 and NRF5240 with the option A to display all details. Notice in file attributes of HTM and NRF, you have CPU architecture version 7 EM, which means Cortex M4, and below it support for thumb to our instruction. Work out for your particular device and surf through the info. You can use option L in read ELF command to get program headers or segments. There is also a section to segment mapping where you can relate it sequentially to above segment table. Use option S to get section headers. Witness the address and offset relation between the different section and segment load address. Lastly, option D combined with obj dump command and the correct machine option gives us disassembly of all the sections in the ELF file. Now for HTM32, when we scroll downwards, we find function reset handler with address on the left hand side similar to what we witnessed in the symbol table. We went through these files for NRF as well as ATtiny85. So I'll just wrap up my analysis here. Target ELF finally down. Let's quickly conclude from what we learned. Hex files are human readable and commonly used for flashing microcontrollers. They already include the starting address and are preferred choice with devices already having bootloader on board. Bin files provide raw minimalistic binary data for direct memory loading and are helpful when your flash size is low. But remember the flashing tool must be explicitly told where to write the bin file. Example, 0x080000000 for HTM32 flash memory. ELF executable and linkable format files are best for debugging because they contain debug sections with valuable information for analyzing and troubleshooting firmware. Sections like debug info, debug line, and sim tab. They provide source code mappings and debugging symbols. Hope you found this video interesting. Do check out the contents on this channel and do not feel shy to share it along. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and show your support. Signing off.